This program contains adult content. What is Eric God? A big atheist. Really? What am I, an idiot? Come on. That yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. But it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true. That religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody! It's not human intelligence! If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Hello and welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Monday, December 6th. This is episode 361. My name is Dan Ellis and I'm joined by two awesome co-hosts. That would be Mr. Ryan Duffy. I am here. Mm-hmm. As far as I know. And Mr. Taylor Grin. I am the way. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had we had a little conversation pre-show where where taylor is clearly a much better stand-in for jesus than ryan would be yeah he's got the hair the trick beard. you know i always show up with water um <laughs> <laughs> ryan's just shaking his head that's fun uh so <laughs> what, what have you guys been doing since we recorded last I've, I've been just a lot been, less time than usual. Yeah, I've been I've been three D printing like crazy. Yeah, you probably saw my. Uh, uh, some people thought my uh, uh, gramophone was metal, but it wasn't. Oh yeah, what did you make the gramophone? Like, what'd you make the horn out? I three D I three D printed that. Oh, it's well. uh, it's the 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 bigger pieces. So. The darker colored pieces are all separate, and then all those little silver rings were all separate. So I printed all that out, then painted it and assembled it, and I kind of gave it like an old, you know, worn like metal a, look. Then I made the base out of wood, and it actually sounds really cool, like a like a rubbed bronze kind of look almost. Yeah, I just i i uh, i airbrushed the whole thing black, and then I took some yeah some metallic paint and just rubbed it on by hand and wiped a bunch off, so it kind of sat in some lower areas and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it made it look really neat. It looks very cool. How's the sound? It sounds really cool. It sounds a lot better than just straight out of wood. And like even I was showing Sarah, I'm like, take the horn in and out, like the volume amplifying, and uh. it 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 can fill a room a lot more than the other ones can. They're just straight wood. So I got a few more ideas for well, making some more artistic ones. That's pretty cool, man. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Uh, what you know? Have, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. You, you know those like over engineered like chotskis, you know, like the little like I, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this like contextually, but like <laughs> you know how sometimes you take something that's like an elaborate rendition of something that's normally just like cheap as hell, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. So so the idea I have with something like that, um, you know the like three quarter inch pans that you use in the kitchen. Right for mm-hmm. prep work, like the metal ones, mm-hmm. and how dish work, dishwashers in any kitchen are going to just sit their phone inside of it to like create their own speaker. Yeah, if you ever worked in like a restaurant, like everyone's known a dishy who's done that. I'm thinking about how cool it would be to make one of those for a, a chef buddy of mine, but where it's got like the nice wood base, <laughs> like yours does, and the insert for the phone, but then like a 3D printed, like, uh you know, three quarter inch pan. <laughs> and it's like, wait, but why? <laughs> because I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, you made the, uh, gramophone. That's awesome. What else? What, what else is happening? Uh, that's about it. I'm just making shit. I'm oh. just being me. And I just, I'm making things that, oh yeah, I'm printing a giant, uh, Terminator T-Rex right now. Terminator T Rex. So yeah. when you would like before we started recording, and you said you were making a Terminator T Rex, I thought, oh, it's a, like it must be a big T Rex thing. But then you showed me the picture of it, and it's like, no Terminator, like from the Terminator movies, kind of T Rex. Yeah. yeah, like if mm-hmm. if you, you wanted to make a cyborg T Rex, this is his skull. Uh huh. So yeah. that'll be fun to paint. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. I I would have imagined that a Terminator T Rex would have been more angular, but actually now that I think about it more, it makes sense to be more rounded because it was like the, in the Mm -hmm. original Terminator, it was more rounded. It wasn't, it didn't have a lot of sharp angles. Yeah. Yeah. Squared off like jaw lines. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, Steven Spielberg films anyway, so, you know, the T-Rex is just saying, I'll be back, right? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And he was. Oh, I see. So what have you been doing, Mr. Grin, as you take a, or want to take a drink of your, <laughs> no, of your I'm good, drink I'm there? good. Um, oh, gosh. Um, last week, Sandra and I celebrated six years together, which is... Yay! Like, hardly feels like it, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, like, holy shit, it's been that long. Um, like, it doesn't, I don't know. Like, it's, we've just been living life. So yeah. that's been a lot of fun. Um, we went on a, the nicest date that we could in our small ass Kansas town. <laughs> um, <laughs> go to the drive in theater and the McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> it was ever so slightly nicer than that. The chef actually went to a culinary school. So that was cool. Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> Um, other than that, nah, not much. Um, I passed that examination I've been talking about. So I have another shirt to set on the sh- shelf. Um, very nice. And then pretty much spent my weekend, like just recovering from that, you know, just playing video games and shit. And that is, we've, we've changed our recording time, um, from Wednesdays to Mondays. And so not much has really happened since our last <laughs> show. We, we did indeed <laughs> shift our recording day. Uh, yep. My long, schedule changed. Yep. Long time listeners know that Ryan's schedule changes and shifts the days that he has to work. And being, being a fire, a firefighter in Ryan's position, it's not like you go to work, you know, a part of the day. You go to the job site and you stay there for days on end. And, yep. then, and then, so, come yeah, so right now I, I go to work on Wednesday and I come home on Saturday. Uh huh. So wow. it makes it, you know, and then that, of course, shifts to make it mm-hmm. more equitable for everybody. And so we have to change our recording days, uh, periodically. This one is good through almost the end of January and then it shifts again. Yeah. But then when it shifts again, I'll be on that schedule for 16 weeks. Oh, nice. A solid nice. four suck. months. That's good. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, it will, I mean, it will suck because it's weekends, right? Yeah. Well, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, which is also our bounce shift. What is so I'll mean? go. So on Sunday, I'll work one station Sunday, Monday. Then on Tuesday, I got to go to the other station. Oh, mm. I didn't know that you had two stations out there. Yeah, we got we got two fire stations. So there's always one crew that's kind of like, hey, you have to work between these two stations during your shift. To basically, <laughs> make sure we got enough guys at all the stations. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm laughing because because. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. in the video, you were making the same hand gesture that Taylor was making earlier. That was, yes. that was I realized that as soon as I started doing it, I'm like, that wasn't intentional, but that's something I would see on Pornhub typically. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that was funny. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I haven't been doing much. I've just been. I got a new carpet cleaner. That's pretty fucking exciting stuff in, <laughs> in my life these days. Uh, Whoa, slow down, Dan. Oh, wow. It, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not just any carpet cleaner. It's a fucking kick ass carpet cleaner, man. Uh, having, having four dogs, it's a bit of a necessity. Oh, and yeah. the carpet cleaner that I am, that I replaced is like more than 20 years old. So that yeah. one, that one was great, but this new one, like in comparison, it's, so much fucking cooler like a lot of shit has changed over 20 years since i bought my other carpet cleaner and this one is just like faster lighter easier it picks up more stuff it's it just works a lot better and so i've been cleaning carpets all over the house and then today we finally had a company come out and start doing some repair work uh, for the flooding that we experienced earlier in the summer summer or late early yeah. early fall and I think it's early fall. Yeah, well we you know, we had the roof done. We had the mm-hmm. chimneys done. We got the chimney hood put on and then we had all of the gutters and everything completed and just in time for the gutters to be completed, we had these torrential rains that mm. flooded, you know, hundreds and hundreds of homes in the Salt Lake Valley and ours was one of them. And we didn't flood out too bad, but we did have water come into the house in a few different areas. One of them being in the basement. And so we finally, you know, at the time we contacted a company to come out, inspect our foundation, tell us where the leak was coming in, all that kind of stuff. So they came out, you know, found out where the leak was probably coming in from, went over the work that they would do to repair it and everything. 
and told us that they were like five months out, four or five months out in scheduling. And, um, then contacted us later, said that they could bump that to be like three months out. And so this has just been on the calendar forever and we just kind of keep forgetting about it. And then they showed up super early this morning. <laughs> I think initially on the calendar, they were supposed to be here at nine and they got here a little after seven today. And so there was this mad dash of both Tracy and I trying to get ready to, <laughs> to greet the guys and let them in the house and figure out what we're going to do with the dogs. Cause they're going to be using the main access point where we usually take the dogs in and out of the house. And so that was kind of a mess. And then I had the lovely sound of a jackhammer for a large portion oh, nice. of the day in the house, which was kind of, kind of cool, kind of weird, but they, well, and the other part of this too is that they, they repair the leak, but they don't repair what they had to do to repair the leak. So they cut out a mm. giant section of two walls and pulled up all of our carpet in that area and then jackhammered some of the concrete out, put in a plastic membrane to keep the water from coming in as easily. And then they also put kind of a French drain system in the corner there. So they used the jackhammer to remove about eight inches of material close to either wall in a V-shape into the corner and then put in a French drain and then put concrete over that with plastic. And it's a, it's a whole thing. <laughs> and now we just have, you know, bare wall and torn up carpet until we can get somebody else in here to fix that. But we couldn't even really try to schedule anybody to come in and fix that until it was fixed. So now it's probably going to be, another, it's probably going to be like that for another three or four months, which is going to fucking suck, but I could fix it. I just don't have the time or desire because I, I'm just not going to do that kind of thing these days. I'll do little things around the house. Not, not, not that kind of shit. I'm not a general contractor, man. <laughs> and you're not a, like an electrician as we've learned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Repeatedly. I did. <laughs> I, I have done a lot of electrical work around the house. I've changed out all of our switches. I've replaced several uh, electric receptacles. I've put in ceiling fans and changed out lights and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't do wiring. That's that's uh, that's bad. I've nearly killed myself at least twice. I think. Yeah, I, I know of twice. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember. The, I remember the photo of the welded screwdriver. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Dude, that one was the scariest because that was on the fucking, uh, the 220 for the, for the dryer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, that was bad. And that one, mm -hmm. like, really, like, that one actually, like, scared me, scared me, like, oh shit, I'm really fucking stupid sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, so yeah, it's just been that, doing carpets and, and work, and that has been going okay lately. I haven't had to work a ton of overtime, which has been nice. Um, but we have, a lot of news to cover, and we'll be doing that on the other side of this little break. This is Natalie Newell of Science Moms and the Parenthetical Science Podcast. You are listening to The Godless Revolution. Many, 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 many more hundreds of eggs are fertilized than become humans. Eggs get fertilized, and by that I mean sperm get accepted by ova a lot. But that's not all you need. You have to attach to the uterine wall, the inside of the of a, a womb, a woman's womb. But if you're going to hold that as a standard, that is to say, if you're going to say when an egg is fertilized, it's therefore all has the same rights as an individual, then who are you going to sue? Whom are you going to sue? Whom are you going to imprison? Every woman who's had a fertilized egg pass through her? Every guy whose sperm has fertilized an egg and then it didn't become a human? Have all these people failed you? Uh, it's just a reflection of a deep scientific lack of understanding. And uh, you, you, you literally or you apparently literally don't know what you're talking about. And so uh, uh, when it comes to women's rights with respect to their reproduction. I think you should leave it to women. Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. Hey, welcome back. Um, I wanted to start us off on this segment by 
opening up with a post that's been going around on social media. Um, I think it's got some really valid points to it and I want to expand on them. Uh, but first I'm going to give the original post, which was written by a woman who um, I don't know her identity. I don't know that anyone does know her identity. It was shared anonymous, anonymously online. Uh, the post goes like this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when life begins. It doesn't matter whether a fetus is a human being or not. That entire argument is a red herring, a distraction, a subjective and unwinnable argument that could not matter less. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about a fertilized egg or a fetus or a baby or a five-year-old or a Nobel Prize winning pediatric oncologist. Nobody, no one has the right to use your body against your will, even to save their life or the life of another person. That's it. That's the argument. You cannot be forced to donate blood or marrow or organs, even though thousands die every year on waiting lists. They cannot even harvest your organs after death without your explicit written pre-mortem permission. Denying women the right to an abortion means you think they deserve less bodily autonomy than a corpse. Mm-hmm. And I felt that like there's there's nothing I can add to that, right? Um, yeah. Well, I, that's not true, actually. I'm going to go over <laughs> and that I think it'll be useful for talking to your Uncle Frank. But that sentiment is what is at stake. It's not about what you owe or don't owe a fetus that you may or may not have been involved in creating. It's not about defending those who can't make their voices heard or any other bullshit like that, right? At the end of the day, it's that we acknowledge in our legal and moral system that you cannot force another human being to give of their flesh and blood, right? Their actual no shit body without their consent, even after they're dead. Um, and so uh, if you find yourself in an argument with your uncle Frank, uh, and I don't want to monologue too much here, so I'm going to give my argument and then I want uh, uh, Ryan and Dan for you guys to kind of come at me with it, right? Um, well, I, I think we'll probably find, be in ag- agreement that women aren't just vessels. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. But if you think of any flaws or if you want to make any, oh, okay. any um, hypothetical counter arguments, I want to I want to get those so that it's of the most use for our listeners. But the idea here is to prepare you, listener, with a well packaged <sighs> talking point is too small, right? Argument, right? Like you can use this as a hip pocket argument. At Thanksgiving or Christmas or the office or whatever, if somebody tries to make the argument that it's not that they're anti-abortion per se, it's just that they want to stand up for the rights of, of you know, the baby, right? So here is, is the analogy that I like to use is that if I were to get into a car and drive out onto the street and deliberately hit a person in the road, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no alcohol involved, right? Like I acquire a malicious urge and for some reason I elect to kill someone with my car in the street. You're a conservative that person. You're a conservative who's gone to a protest somewhere. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. and, uh, and, and so I get taken to court. The person has survived, right? But the person, both of their kidneys, let's say both of their kidneys are, are damaged beyond repair and they're sitting on a dialysis machine and I have two perfectly healthy kidneys. There is not a single judge in America who has the authority or who even would make the argument that part of my um, appropriate justice should be to have one of my kidneys taken out if it was to match, right? to replace that of my victim whom I intentionally attempted to murder. Right. Mm -hmm. If that were the case, if in another situation, um, I, I do go out on a bender, right. And I am just drunk off my ass and I drive my vehicle into another vehicle, right. I die. And one of the victims in that vehicle survives. And again, you know, both of their kidneys or, or anything, right? Any organ fails as a result of that accident. No judge could force my corpse to give that victim any of my organs, 
mm-hmm. unless I had explicitly signed up to be an organ donor prior to that point. Mm-hmm. So when somebody says that a woman, you know, whether by a commission or omission or neglect or what have you, elects to engage in sex that causes her to become pregnant, that she now bears responsibility for that fetus and has to bring it to term because she, you know, quote fingers opted into that when she chose to have sex, Mm. right? No, absolutely not. I can opt to get into my vehicle and go kill a person with that vehicle, right? Or attempt to do so. And no one can force me to give my organs to keep that person alive, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I can go out and shoot someone in the liver and no one can force me to give that person some of my liver. Uh, It does not matter how much responsibility you do or do not have. Um, If I elected to donate a kidney to a close friend and then they sat me on the operating table and before they turned on the um, anesthesia said, are you sure you want to go through with this? If I said no, in that moment, the surgery is off. Right. You can withdraw consent at any time. That's what bodily autonomy means. And, and, you know, if you're having that discussion with your uncle Frank, what you need to do at that point is get really quiet and let him respond because he's going to have to come up with a good reason to oppose that logic. And he won't come up with a good reason. Well, I think they should be able to force you to do that. If you're going to do that on your own fault, you're going to fuck up and run somebody over with your car, then you should have to, you should have to be able to take care of that person because it's all your fault. Oh, okay. Well, they, cool. They so you, you would be happy with a Black Lives Matter protester getting uh, one of your kidneys if you were to run into them when they were knocking on your car with metal pipes at one of their protests. Well, there was that, that was their fault for being in the goddamn road. Oh, okay. All right. Sure. Um, and it was your fault for running into them with your vehicle, right? Well, yeah, but they didn't have to be in inside your car. If they, if they'd have been in their own car, then they probably wouldn't have been injured as much. Okay. Well, if that kid had only been born to a, a Christian like you, then they wouldn't have gotten aborted, right? Goddamn right. They wouldn't have been aborted because I believe in, <laughs> I believe in protecting them babies. Well, I, th- I think. Yeah. The argument you hear most times is they have another option, and that's adoption, which is mm. bullshit. Right, it is bullshit, Um, because there's currently in excess of at least 2,000 unadopted babies in every state in the country. Well, and even, and even then... Some of them will age out. Well, but even then, you're still requiring that the woman carry the fetus to term, that you, you yes. are forcing her to remain pregnant and to deliver... Right, oh, yeah. And to deliver that fetus, you're not, you're not saying that, okay, well, you know, instead of just terminating your pregnancy and, and, you know, getting rid of the fetus, we're going to, you know, remove it and then we can incubate it and then we'll give it to somebody else. That yeah. that's fine. That that's, right. that's an adoption route that, like, you know, everybody should be okay with, but that's not the case because mm-hmm. I mean, typically right now, the argument surrounding even the most recent, um, case that's that was presented to the scotus was around viability and the limits on that because of the increase in technology blah 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 and that you know once once there's a heartbeat all of this all of these other arguments that still don't at all take into account the autonomy of the woman who is carrying that well i mean you have the only time i can think of where you so if a police officer wants your blood to test it, to see if you got into a vehicle accident, someone died, well, we need to test that person's blood to see if they're on drugs. Mm-hmm. And you say no, or you're unconscious. Mm. They are legally not allowed to test you. They mm-hmm. have to get a court order and they basically have to subpoena your fucking blood out of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah. They're not allowed to just to do, I mean, that's the only time where I can think where they can legally get any part of you out of you when you say no. Well, it can't get that's to go any through a fucking of court order. Yeah. Yeah. It, but, uh, but even then that doesn't deal with the bodily autonomy it argument. Uh, and f- really what, what, what conservatives are advocating for is forcing women they're 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 for forced pregnancy and forced birth 
it's yeah. not it's not about abortion it's not necessarily about protecting the child they want to do away with the bodily autonomy argument and force women to be brood mares that's that's all they're fucking concerned with because as we know once they're born they don't give a shit yeah and i love mm. how like even recently i think i saw on the deseret news here an article popped up where they were concerned about not as many children being born mm-hmm it's like, why? Our popul- We're not just going to go extinct because we have a lower birth rate. We're still fucking producing a lot mm-hmm. of fucking people. Just not mm-hmm. at the same rate as before. Like, well, and, we're and, not in danger of going extinct anytime soon. And Taylor can probably speak to, to the bit about this, that a lot of the the desire to force women to carry these babies to term and to talk about, you know, 60 million, 60 million innocent babies have been killed. If you want to go down Tate Reeves twisted line of logic that, you know, since Roe versus Wade has been decided in favor of allowing women to abort these children, these babies over 60 million babies have been aborted because of our lax laws and allowing women to just be promiscuous, run around, have sex, do, drugs with wild people do whatever they want and then you know to take the innocent life of the baby that they have carried in them it doesn't matter it doesn't fucking matter what they've done up to that point you can't force them to continue being pregnant you can't force them into a pregnancy that they don't want i I would also say you got to look at those numbers that religious groups put out too because a lot of them also consider any kind of birth control to be an abortifate. Abortifate. Whether it's the morning yeah. after yeah. pill, just taking yeah. birth control. They can they they lump a lot of things in there that's not actually an abortion into their numbers for these are the number of abortions that have gone on. It's like, no, it's not an abortion. Well, and that's just it. Like mm-hmm. if you if you think they're going to stop at abortion, you're fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. where, well, where, where 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 is viability at? Is semen on its own viable? If it's healthy semen or a healthy egg. Is that viable? It's, it's so, and, and the thing is, so this issue has lots of different versions of the right who have all kind of coalesced around it. Um, Catherine Stewart's book, uh, the power worshipers, uh, it's first few chapters are actually fantastic at describing how the right united with Christianity in the seventies and eighties, especially, um, around the issue of abortion in particular. Um, there's a great quote that I'm going to try and riff on while I try and search it. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to be able to find it. I'll bring it up sometime in the future, but basically the, the gist of the quote is that the unborn are a fantastic, um, group to use as a, like an anti scapegoat because they can't actually like advocate for themselves. They're totally mute. And so when you act as an advocate for the unborn, you can say whatever you want to say on their behalf Mm -hmm. and they can't tell you any different. Um, And so when conservatives use the unborn as their, you know, poster children, um, you know, they can't say, Hey, stop exploiting me. Right. Like I'm a veteran. Right. And I've, I've gotten into fights with people who try to use veterans as some sort of conservative, um, you know, poster boy. And I'll say, Hey, get my name out of your mouth. Right. Like I am a veteran and I don't support your bullshit. Right. Um, the unborn can't do that. Um, so there's that right from, from a political power standpoint, there's also the white supremacist talking point that has gotten increasing, mainstream support up to and including Tucker Carlson, which is called uh, uh, great replacement theory, right? Which is some fucking bullshit, Mm -hmm. but it's this idea that like white people are being bred out of their majority because non-white people are having more children than them. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. And that's, that was, I I got a little sidetracked in my head while I was talking earlier when I said (laughs) you could probably speak more to this, but that, that was what I wanted to, to, to highlight was that a lot of this is, you know, that they want to force women to have children so that they can, you know, they, in their minds, they're, they're doing what you said, where they're, they're speaking up for, you know, they're being the voice of the voiceless and then they can insert whatever voice they want to, because that 
voiceless person will never have a voice. The, the, we don't know what they're thinking. And that made me uh, think of another line of argumentation that I wanted to run past you guys. I don't know if either of you watched the, the television series Yellowstone. It's no. basically a cowboy fucking draw. It's it's a cowboy soap opera, and which is why I didn't watch. Absolutely it. not. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you don't like westerns, Taylor. So I figured you probably weren't watching it. That's like my two least favorite things <laughs> smashed together. <laughs> so it's 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 a it's one of those shows that uh, it, it was it was funny. We were watching on Saturday night. Uh, we watched one of the latest episodes, and Tracy and I have watched all of the seasons. We're we're caught up with the current season, and we completed one episode, and it was like I don't know ten o'clock, and it was Saturday. We're old, so you know ten o'clock is usually our bedtime, ten or eleven. But oh, we're sitting there. Late. We we finished one episode, and like at the end of the episode, Tracy turns to me. She's like, "I hate this fucking show," and it <laughs> finishes, and she turns to me. She's like, "Should we watch the next episode?" <laughs> oh no. Because it's just, it's one of those things that like, there's so much in it that is just cringeworthy and we fucking hate, but it's all, it's like a train wreck. It's like, it's like a, it's like Mm -hmm. a rolling train wreck. We can't pull our eyes away from it. But as part of that, in this latest season, in the most recent season for the show, and I'm not, I'm I'm not going to be throwing out spoilers. So don't worry if you're, if you're watching it and you're not caught up this, I mean, it may be a minor spoiler, but it's no big deal. Just in case you watch the masterpiece that is Yellowstone. (laughs) (laughs) And it's, I mean, it's entertaining for sure, but, um, sorry, there's, (laughs) there's one of the characters that has been introduced this season is this young kid who, uh, one of the other primary characters finds in the hospital when she's there to help her father, the patriarch, the main character in the show, Kevin Costner. She's there at his bedside after an incident earlier in the season uh, has put him in the hospital. And while she's there in the hospital, there's this young kid that she meets who is there because his father who is the only person in this kid's life. He has no other relatives, no other family to speak of his mother, has never even been mentioned as far as I can recall. But his, this kid's father is in the hospital because his father is a heroin addict and he's dying. And this kid is, I think he said he's 13. And, you know, the, the father is in there dying of a heroin overdose and actually does die while he's there in the hospital. And this kid Spoiler. has this kid has nothing and nobody. He has no relatives. He has no home. His He and his father had been basically living on the streets because his father is a heroin addict. And then his father dies. And this kid is probably going to end up going into the foster care system. And foster care is great in a lot of aspects and, and respects, but there are also a lot of problems with it and a lot of um, problems the, it, I don't want to get into, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here. Foster care system can be great. It can also be really terrible. This kid is worried that he's going to go into the foster system. Uh, Beth, Kevin Costner's daughter in the show, um, sees something in this kid uh, that she admires. As his father is dying, the kid, you know, the, the doctor tells him, well, you know, your father is going. Is there anything you want to say to him? The kid walks over to him and, you know, basically just kind of whispers, fuck you. Fuck you for leaving me by myself for doing this to me. Fuck you. I know I'll see you in hell basically. And this is a 13 year old Mm -hmm. kid who the point that I'm trying to get to here Mm -hmm. was never didn't, didn't ever have any say in being born. He didn't have a choice to be born in the first fucking place. And he's born into a world with no stability, no familial ties that are going to, turn him into a productive member of society was probably not wanted in the first fucking place. And this is his life. Now he's looking at a life of crime to support himself in the future and moving in and out of the foster care system. In a later episode, he mentions being put in the foster care system before and being raped as a, as a child, you know, 13 years or younger in the foster care system. And that's the Mm -hmm. life that he has to look forward to now because he probably wasn't wanted in the first place. And so Republicans, other than 
wanting to force women to continue their pregnancies and bear children that they don't want in the first fucking place. They're not going to take care of them on the back end of this. And they're pretending that this, that they're being the voice of this child that is yet to be born. And, you know, is just striving to be free and enjoy all the things here in America that everybody else loves God and guns. And, you know, how are we going to ever raise up another kid to, go into a school and shoot up their classmates. If we abort it before that ever happens, they're, they're pretending as if they're just pretending as if every fetus is going to be, you know, the next country star that's going to start waving the flag around and wanting to suck Donald Trump's dick. That's not the fucking case here. And they can't say that. And they're not taking into account at all saying whether that child wants to be born in the first fucking place. That child doesn't have any say in the matter. It doesn't matter what the child's choice is. It doesn't matter because it's not even a fucking child in the first place. And you can't force a woman to bear pregnancy and carry this thing to term. Yeah, but that's a person who will be born into a system that doesn't want them and has no social safety net. So they're not going to complain as much to get paid seven twenty five an hour to work for McDonald's. Yeah, they're just going to be another cog in the system. They don't really fucking mm-hmm. care ultimately about the welfare of this child. Oh, no. And no. when we're no, talking, yeah, and when we're talking about a child that, you know, otherwise would have been not here because because the woman decided that she wanted to have an abortion, that child mm-hmm. is going to be put into a life where for the rest of their life, they're going to be the thing that was not wanted. And right, in, but that's that's prosperity gospel, though. I mean, that's the thing is if that child is not successful, that's their fault. And that's what God is giving them as justice for their actions. That's shit. Oh, that, that's that's just their evil. that's just their lot in life is that they're mm-hmm. going to be yeah. forever. It's punished. basically predestination with extra steps. Yeah. Yeah. So you're using yeah. the kid to punish the adult because they are a piece of shit. And and when that kid doesn't have successful outcomes in life, well, it's because they failed to be virtuous enough to overcome their circumstances because God won't give you a challenge that he doesn't think that you can uh, overcome. So mm-hmm. if you fail, that's on you, not on any of your social circumstances. You just didn't pull your bootstraps hard enough and God has given you your just re- desserts for failing to overcome the the challenge that he placed before you. Yeah, it's, it's like that guy whose parachute didn't open. If he would have just flapped his arms fucking fast enough, he could have flown. God wasn't going to mm-hmm. give him a test he couldn't pass. Yeah. It just it it just kills me that their their stance on abortion is schizophrenic when you when you take everything into account and that's just it. They're not they're not taking the big picture of whether or not the child has any say in, in being born in the first fucking place, what they're going mm-hmm. to do to help take care of the child after they have forced it to be born into this world that, uh, <laughs> that is on decline, that is in decline. I mean, our climate mm-hmm. is failing. Our governments are failing. Society in general is failing all over the place. And they want to force I mean- people into that system. Hi, this is Andrew Seidel of the Freedom From Religion Foundation and author of The Founding Myth. And you are listening to The Godless Revolution. Abortions for all. Very well. No abortions for anyone. Abortions for some. Miniature American flags for others. If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! I need to, I need to find the way to articulate this better, or, or at least in more depth. But the reactionary position does not need to be internally consistent. Mm. Right. Conservatives are and always have been a reactionary movement. Right. The very first conservatives were reactionaries against the um, liberal movement. And I mean, the liberal movement by way of like Thomas Paine and, and Thomas Jefferson. Right. Of the of the French and American revolutions. Right. That mm-hmm. liberal movement. Original conservatism. Erupted the, the out of that. Phase. 
Yeah, and it was a monarchist movement. It was reactionary to the idea of democracy and equality. Um, and it advocated for a return to a hierarchical structured society. Um, and, and it is like anytime somebody says a conservative is somebody who wants to conserve traditions, yada, 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 bullshit. No, that's propaganda that conservatives will tell you. The origin of conservatism is to go back to a time period where democracy was not a thing. Mm hmm. Um, so their, their position does not have to be internally consistent insofar as it is a reaction against the things that liberals, not progressives, but liberals want out of society. Yeah. Well, and that's just that they don't, they don't care about anybody else's desires. Really. They don't care what anybody no. else wants. They don't care what's going to be beneficial for most people in the end. They're no. Why would you care about the life of a peasant? Their job is to till the fields. Yeah. They just want to, they just, they just want a win for religion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other part of this too well, is, I, oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say they want the people to be put in their place. Mm -hmm. Right. They, a while back, I brought up a quote, right? Um, conservatism, if it has one precept, it is this to wit, to create laws, um, which, protect the in-group and constrain the out-group. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's like, that's that's what conservatism is, is you create, these are the special people, right? And if, if you are, if you're right. the daughter of Greg Locke, right? If you are the daughter of Tucker Carlson, right? If you're Ivanka Trump and you need an abortion, you're well, gonna then they will fly you on a private plane to mm -hmm. a private practice doctor in Canada and they'll get you an abortion. Mm -hmm. And that's your right because you belong to the in-group. And if you're one of the peasants, right? If you're one of, uh, if you are not one of God's select, they don't care. If you're one of the poors, you. yeah. If you're, if you're yeah. wealthy and powerful, you can do whatever the fuck you want. If you're poor, you have to live with what we'll mm -hmm. give you. Yeah. I mean, it's already so, so it's hard. important to remember that their position is more internally coherent than it seems as long as you also accept their view on to whom different social standards apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I want to say it was Oklahoma that they had a lady on there on NPR who was saying that she was, they, she was one of the women that helps run the clinic there. That is the only clinic in the state that's legally allowed to perform, to provide abortions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's, that's not a small state and there's only one single place they can go to. Yeah. Because like, they've, they've, they've tried to make it as hard yeah. as fucking possible to do what you are legally allowed to do in the first place. Uh huh. They've chipped away well, at well, those and, rights over and over again at every chance. And, and let's, let's dig further into the, the, um, you know, just world theory, right. Is, is the name of the, the sociological theory that's, that's at play here with something like prosperity gospel, right? If, if a woman is raped, um, she is raped according to that theory because she was somewhere she wasn't supposed to be, or she was giving the wrong indications to someone that she should not have been giving. You know, she probably shouldn't have been working at that place. She should have been at home, either taking care of kids or waiting for marriage. Right. Um, if she was out on the streets, then she shouldn't have been out on the streets unaccompanied by a member of her family. You know, who was it? Mike Pence, who said mm. that he won't be in the room at the same time as, another as a member of the opposite sex without yeah. another person there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, if, if it's something like incest, right. Uh, well, you know, at the end of the day, like you could have said no. her father's property. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and if she wants to maintain her virtue, then she needs to make sure that she is acting in an appropriate way, the Christians would say. They don't care about exceptions for, for rape or incest because ultimately it's the fault of the woman for not presenting herself in a way that prevents those things from happening in the first place. And obviously those aren't my viewpoints, right? But I am articulating the viewpoint uh, that is actually goddamn held by the religious right in this country and other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hate the argument. Well, you, you had sex knowing this could have been a consequence of it. So you now get to pay mm -hmm. the price. Well, like, I, you know, I also have an what option. What was she wearing? Yeah. No, no. Even just consensual sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. They say, well, 
you knew this was a possibility. It's like, well, sex mm-hmm. isn't illegal and abortions aren't illegal either. And most people don't use abortion as a form of birth control, but it's kind of like a, oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. I can't afford mm-hmm. to have this child. Uh, I can't afford to leave work. This is going to fuck my entire life up. Um, as much as it pains me to do it, I'm going to do it. Well, and mm-hmm. and as conservatives are so fond of saying, like, birth control isn't 100%. The only, the only real yeah. birth control is abstinence. Which is bullshit, which schools and areas that we already know is a fact that teach abstinence only it, it has more problems with this shit because people don't know. Yeah, if they don't, if they don't teach them, if they don't teach them how to have safe sex and to use mm -hmm. birth control, then yeah, that that's a problem. But I'm I'm increasingly coming around. There's there's a deep, unsettled philosophical debate between two dead guys. (laughs) One is Thomas S. Kuhn, and the other is Karl Popper, right? Mm. And most of the time. I am on the side of Karl Popper in that debate. And there's going to be like one listener who's going to be like, yeah, that guy. Right. Um, But Thomas S. Kuhn in his book, the structure of scientific revolutions wrote that science, uh, he's quoting somebody else and I can't remember the guy, but he says that that science progresses one funeral at a time. (laughs) Um, That, that people don't come into new ways of thinking. The ways of thinking uh, develop and the old guard hold tight to their ideas and eventually they die. Right. Um, and when the old guard die, the young people who have been raised to see not only the old guards ideas, but new ideas will select the idea that is actually more scientifically accurate. And they will uh, move forward with that idea. Right. Which is a long winded way of saying like, like, Paradigm shifts in science happen not intra generationally, but intra or intergenerationally. Mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It, it takes people dying off for people to hold new views. Right? And and ordinarily, I agree with Popper's idea, which is that like incremental changes can happen intra generationally, and this whole bunch of other shit. Right? That they argued about. That's well beyond the scope of this show. But increasingly, politically, I've been coming around to to. Um, Kuhn's perspective with regards to politics. There is a significant chunk of the conservative voter today that we will never persuade, right? We can argue and assess and analyze until we're all blue in the face about right, right, what the mindset is of these conservatives, but we will not persuade them. The only thing that we can do is try to be persuadable to younger people. Right. Yeah, but and, herein and lies to, the problem. Yeah. Their parents who are yeah, fuck them. spend no no, I'm saying their parents who spend more time with them, who are also the ones mm-hmm. passing down that ideology, that that yeah. thought process. Right. Right. So, I, I I had read Ann Coulter, Glenn Beck, Michelle Malkin, and Michael Savage by the time I was twelve years old. Yeah, because of right. my parents. You, right? You, you, you <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are an anomaly. Yeah, here I am today. And so right, gross. It is possible, right? It is possible. It I, is, I, the, I, the mechanisms exist. <laughs> I'm just saying it's a slow, slow, mm-hmm. slow process. Because yeah, yeah, you might have gotten it, but 15 others probably didn't. Well, and I was yeah. I was thinking about this the other night that for a lot of the legislation and you know most. Well, I don't know about most. I know that there are lots and lots of states who have created trigger laws that as soon as Roe versus Wade is struck down, they're going yeah. to throw in uh, abortion bans stuff. in their states. Mm-hmm. Utah is one of them. And the Supreme Court is, has basically hinted that their argument is that, you know, we're going to strike this down as a as a federal right <laughs> that is protecting women. And we're going to leave this to the states to decide. It's going yeah. to be a states' rights issue. The states where they're they're this this grand experiment in in all kinds of legislation and laws, right? We're going to kick yeah. it back to the states. It'll be a states' rights issue. But a lot of those states also have no exceptions for rape, for incest, for the age or health of the woman in question. So we're looking at you know various states where a twelve year old could be raped by her father. 
impregnated and then the state will force her to carry that child to term and then have to deal with that as a 12 year old fucking child and they don't care if the woman or the child that has been raped and impregnated has any means to take care of herself or her child it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter you Mm -hmm. you should have done something to protect yourself from daddy raping you in the middle of the fucking night and getting pregnant and that's disgusting i don't know what else to say about that other than it's just barbaric and disgusting and they don't fucking care because they don't care about women. Ultimately, that's the whole issue here. They don't care about women. If, if this was a men's issue, if men had to carry a fetus to term, there would be no issue here. It would be abortions for everybody, abortions across the land, abortions for all time. You could, you could get an abortion at a vending machine. It would be like guns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'd be that they would be as readily available as guns for any, mm-hmm. as guns for anybody. Yeah. Well, I mean like in a way they are. Like I've I personally have had hookups where like just out of excess caution, like at the end of the, you know, the morning after I was like, "Hey, here's here here's a plan B pill just in case." Right. Like mm-hmm. let's this this was a one night stand. Let's neither of us get into a situation we don't want to be in. Like, you know, I I'm sure it's typically rough the day after you take one of those, right? Um, I didn't have to suffer for that, right? But yeah, she did. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that is the price of our society. But like to that to that degree, like that's a thing. That is a thing that exists now, right? Um and depending and, and, on the state, that right there is considered a form of abortion. Yeah. And, and like, it shouldn't be the case that that's, you know, like, like the, the balance of power. And I have since, right. Had, had, um, you know, a vasectomy. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've been in a relationship for six years, so that doesn't really matter as much that way. But like, I I was not with Sandra when I got a vasectomy. Right. You you don't keep a a candy jar of my reason pills. What's that? You don't keep a candy jar of plan B pills next to the bed? No, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to. Take oh, I'm not list, saying I right? did. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, no, we, we live in a society where it's far easier as a man, right? Like I went in to, to get my vasectomy and, and the doctor asked me, how many kids do you have? And I said, zero. That's the point. And he said, yeah. done and done. And we went through the procedure. Any woman like, like, you don't have to write us because I know it is fucking impossible for you to get hysterectomies if you would like one, mm-hmm. right? Any form of, of, of sterilization as a woman, if you would like one. You're to get your well, tubes I've, tied, um, yeah. There, yeah. There was actually, there's a story that was, the lady was suing the hospital because they were going in to do a uh, C-section. So she was having a kid. They were going in to do a C-section. She said, hey, while you're in there doing the C-section, you mind removing some other bits while you're there too? And they're like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Has a C-section, goes through the whole thing. They stitch her back up. They're like, we didn't remove your ovaries because that's against our religious practices at this hospital. Yeah. It's like, well, if I would have known that, I, I would have gone to, this... to a different fucking hospital yeah. that would have done the surgical procedure I wanted instead of having to be opened up again. Mm-hmm. Like, you're already in there. I don't want any more yeah. kids. Take them the fuck out. Right, right. Don't make another surgical scar. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. Um, And, and as a pro tip, um, something that I have, have acquired from people that I know who have, who have made these requests is if you are trying to get any procedure like that done, um, ask your doctor for a written record of their refusal to perform a sterilization service on you. And um, oftentimes that doctor will either slow their roll or if they create a written record, it'll make it a lot easier for you to go to the next doctor and say, okay, it's been a year. I still want to have a sterilization done. Uh, Fuck you. Here's a record of it. Do the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but this has been, we've, I intended this to be like half of a segment and this ended (laughs) up becoming an entire show. So I think at this point, it would probably be a good move to thank our patrons. And we are going to cover some additional content about um, Joel Osteen and some potential insurance fraud in that Patreon section. So for our Patreon supporters, uh, I would like to extend 
my heartfelt thanks. You keep the show going. Um, and I mean, seriously, like in the real way, like we have server costs and RSS feed costs. Like, you know, we, we take time out of our day to make this show happen. This is not our full-time job and you keep that going. So I want to pass along my thanks, starting with two skeptical chaps. A noble spirit embiggens the smallest man, a perfectly cromulent statement. Alan Firth. All hail Peanut Butra. Hunter Grin. John McCullough. Ollie Olson. Sinead Duffy. Steve Kuno. Steven Andrus. Theodore Sellen. Tiffany Hudson. Travis Lindbergh. Vanessa. Alex Jones Gay Frog Brigade. Corey Ebert. Don't be a Richard. Freethinker215. Jeff Peterson. Jeremy Goodson. Matthew Sanders. Megan Mitchell. The guy that asks questions before he finishes the show. Utah Outcasts. Wesley Aaron. Came for the Rebel, stayed for the Lucian. A new Patreon patron. Thank you very much. And we also got another new one. (gasps) Marvin Dracone. Yay. And I'm guessing we're probably saying that wrong, but I don't, I don't. Because I said it. That's why you, that's why you gave me that one. It's a good guess. Say them all wrong. (laughs) Thank you so much, Janet Uter. Purple Dragon. Ryan Mayfield. Sarah Segovia. Savita Kuna. Tim Jacobson. Trisha Weir. James. And Reverend Lovejoy wants you to please support Recovering From Religion. Woo! Thank you all very much. If you, dear listener, would like to become a Patreon patron, you can do so very easily by going to patreon.com slash godlessrevolution, where you can contribute as little as $1 per episode, and then you get uh, the episode before anybody else. You get extended versions of the episode, extended outtakes, all kinds of fun stuff. And... For Patreon patrons this evening, we'll be talking about all of the money that was found in a wall at Joel Osteen's megachurch recently while a plumber was fixing a toilet. That's an interesting thing we were going to do in the main show, but we ran out of time talking about (laughs) abortion and conservative asshats. So, until next week, thank you all very much. We're going to move into the Patreon portion. Uh, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And, And before we leave you this week... Um, if you would consider, um, if you are not able to give of your money, would you be willing to give of your time and talents and, uh, potentially leave us a review? Um, if you can leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or what have you, um, it increases our visibility, which makes it, you know, gives more ears our shit to listen to. And we would really appreciate that. (laughs) Indeed. Without... Any more ado, I'll bid you adieu, and we'll move into the Patreon portion. On we. <laughs> I sneezed. <laughs> we got one outright fascist group, and in our group, that's kind of fascist. Do we want to move just... on to people who should have been aborted after that? Or <laughs> talk about church? <laughs> it's a long list. <laughs>